Uh, hi, Max. Hi. Um, just want to hear something from you, and I've got an associate with me who would be asking a question or two. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. So if I look over that way, the associate's on that side. Okay? <laughs> yeah, All okay. Right. Brilliant. There she is. Okay, that would be good. So then if we can bounce off each other that way, yeah. um, just a little bit, then it'll help me out, all right? Yeah. That'd be brilliant. Perfect. So I'm easy to do um, Go on. whatever you want to talk about. Max, it is a real pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you. And I've watched yeah. your videos and your courage just shines through in everything that I've seen that you've done. And I really, truly thank you for that and for speaking out. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, it was actually never my intention to do that. Uh, I think that because of circumstances in 2008, I was so needed to find out what what was happening to me that um, I sort of that was the that was the the route that I had to go to try and to try and find out stuff. So essentially, I started it and began doing it for sort of selfish reasons really and then it opened up and then I you know I wanted to help other people who'd been through anything that was even remotely similar to what I'd been through. So that's yeah. that's that's how that began. So so what advice would you give to anybody right now who is just starting that road of looking within and looking for answers? Yeah. Um definitely um, there's so much confusion outside, there's so much confusion going out on outside and so many different people telling so many different things that, um, especially at the moment, what I've been trying to do and the people that, who I speak to and friends of mine and people who I work with, I have been, the one thing that this particular consciousness stream that is controlling or has its hands on controlling the planet at the moment is vampiric in nature, which is vampiric. It's it's, it, it's a taking energy. It's not giving energy. It doesn't have a central source where it, it can't self it cannot self sustain. Has to take from others. Um, so with all the confusion that's going on on the outside, um, I started to find the best information when I was away from any other distractions, from away from any, even other people, just being alone and actually allowing myself to be alone and just be with myself, without music, mm -hmm. without television, without anything. And then sort of things, when I had, the longer I spent by myself just doing that, even without books or anything, because books are even a distraction, mm -hmm. so things would start coming to me and memories would start coming to me. And um, that that sort of like quiet voice that's inside of you would start opening up and there would be a clearer, clearer connection between me and it, even though it is one and the same thing. And so, so um, uh, to, to uh, like I said, there's so many different things and so many different people saying different things. I think that to start learning to trust yourself um, and, uh, and then you sort of, Take take what feels right to you, and personally to you, and um, leave the rest alone and put the rest down. Um, and that's how I, that's what I did to start with. It didn't matter if somebody else said to me like, "This is it. This is for sure. This is the you know, this is how that happened." And this particular story, and this Anunnaki did this, and that. Well, that that. that didn't matter like if it felt right to me then I would take hold of that and then sit alone with that feeling and you know all that sit alone with that information and see how it sat with me my ears, sorry I said yeah, my ears, my I understand ears. that what you're saying there as well but there's so much bombardment of external especially noise. now yeah oh, oh yeah 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 I mean with so many frequencies going on in this single area as well you know and, and that can even be a distraction um, but yeah there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, people who, um, there's, I don't like this, the ego part of uh, this field either, where people like, you know, I don't like the word followers, and that seems to come up a lot. I've got like, I've got 5,000 followers, and uh, you know, okay, what does that really mean? I don't, I don't think anyone should really be following anybody. You should perhaps like look to self, and then trust self, and then you don't need to follow anybody. Sure, sure. You sort of follow yourself, 
and you guide yourself. Because when you follow, so when you start following somebody, you're handing over your power, you're giving away your power. And the whole point and the whole mess that we're in in the first place is that we've handed over our power to everybody, everybody else, and that's, that's the issue. You know, the vampiric consciousness that is here has created um, religions or sport or um, uh, uh, philosophies or, or any of those. It does, they don't care particularly which one you follow or which one you attach to. It's none of their business which one you do, but as long as you attach to one of them. Mm. Because each one is connected to, like, they're like it's like a multi-headed or a, maybe an octopus. So if there's a central point like that, so each of the strands come out, but they all lead to the same center point, which is a black hole, essentially. Mm. It's a black hole uh, that is pulling energy from people in any way. And they particularly like, you know, any of the religions, because that's, you know, that's, that's precious energy that's given away like that. Even uh, um, a, a lot of the um, big music, uh, uh, gatherings that go on are set up ritualistically so uh, they don't care whether you're cheering or whether you're booing it doesn't really matter as long as you're doing it strongly uh, so so you like, even Glastonbury is now set up in a specific way where the stage it's all ritualistically done with to pull energy from the people and then they gather that energy mm. harvest it and use it then to manifest the false reality that we're living in, because they can't create reality. They don't know. They don't. They don't have the create. They don't have the creative spark themselves. Mm -hmm. But they do know how to manipulate the ones that do have it, mm -hmm. and that's essentially what the deal is. They're manipulating this because it's the subconscious that creates the physical mm -hmm. reality, and they've hijacked the subconscious of, of the of the real creators. Mm -hmm. And then now we're stuck in this false reality mess. Um, uh, there's a lot of complexities that go on exactly how that works, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's going on with that. Yes, I mean, yeah. I I did that myself for a year. I cut out all the external sources, including mm -hmm. books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just went within. Yeah. Uh, to unravel myself and what was it that I believed, rather than. And what did I know within myself, mm. rather than what I had been taught yeah, yeah, yeah. and told right. was reality? Uh, and okay, so this is the, that's that's a very good point because so so the, the creation of this reality begins at the young age. So all the textbooks um, and all the history books are are then written and and uh, so that when so that we all collectively believe this particular thing. So then we all when we all believe it. We all ma ma manifest a reality that's based on these books. Yes. Uh, that's very sneaky in a very clever way to yeah. do it because how do I know? How do we know the textbooks? Are, um, uh, they're not. The, 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 the wars are written by the winners, mm. aren't they? And so the winners write whatever they want to write in there. Yeah. And then, then we just believe it. We take it on board. So we, t so we start... We start learning that numbers and letters are, they only give us a very simple version of what numbers and letters are. And there's so much more to what numbers and letters are. Uh, even phonetically, um, uh, how, how, how a word sounds, how you say it, when you speak, how it sounds to a person is going to affect them. It's not just a word. You know, I think I wrote the other day, you know, and I think you know, people know this, but um, you, know, you spell a word, because it's words spell. are spells. Yes. You say a sentence to somebody, you're, you're literally saying a spell. Mm -hmm. And words are, really, you know, that, that old adage, sticks and stones, and I break my bones, but words, when, you know, names, names will never hurt me, mm -hmm. is, is, is not true. Yes. Yeah, because words are very, very powerful. Yeah. I go further and say thought matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally very. matters. Yeah, yeah. Well, thought creates matter. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And all our words yeah. are endorsing that. Yeah, reinforcing it yeah. all the time, reinforcing yeah. it, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You said something um, a moment ago um, to do with uh, the vampirism mm. that goes on on this planet. It, it is a vampiric yes. consciousness, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no doubt and, about that. And um, from my own spiritual journey, I would say that that is a, uh, 
where we've forgotten who we truly are mm. along the way because we're self-sustaining mm. when we're connected to our true self directly to source yeah. and what religions do and many of the other belief systems do is it it cuts us off from that and we're placing our power to something else yeah. rather than our own unique self yes and when you mentioned followers yes In again it's not about followers because yeah. Every one of those people are individuals yeah. with their own uniqueness to yeah. find. Yes. And and what you're doing is sharing your uniqueness. Yeah. Yes. But you don't want people to copycat. No, and, I don't. And Definitely don't. And I don't want. I want also people to discard what they don't agree with what mm -hmm. I'm saying. If it doesn't fit for them, mm -hmm. fantastic. Then don't. Then let that bit go. That's that's okay as well. And I'm definitely not a hundred. Nowhere near a hundred percent correct. I just. Mm -hmm. And I'm on. The, I know that I'm on the right. I'm pointing in the right direction. Yes. That I definitely know. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah, so um, it is. It's this. It is parasitic. The consciousness mm -hmm. that's here. Sometimes I see it as imagery of like maggots, like a maggoty sort of energy, energy that sort of like it just eats through. Eats. It, mm -hmm. It's. It's. It's mind is about. Its mind. Its thought pattern is conquer and destroy, mm -hmm. and that's what it does, and that's what it's done to other planets too. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's trying on this so this particular planet. Uh, they want us all as well to think that this is an insignificant place in the middle of a universe, in the middle of a super universe, a tiny little dot that's you know that's insignificant. When it isn't, this particular planet, Earth, is an anagram for heart. Mm -hmm. So this planet here is the one that they want to take control of. So they, mm -hmm. they want to take control of the heart, mm -hmm. the human heart. It's connected to the earth, mm -hmm. and those, that's the one. That's the fine. That's mm -hmm. the one that they can't. It's very easy to to, to control the base chakra, you know, because that's that's mainly what's driven through television and media all mm -hmm. the time. It's it, that's all. It's base is always or like you know primal energy, uh, uh, bestial energy is sort of mm -hmm. always invoked in that, and they can sort of feed from that. But it's the heart energy mm -hmm. that they really want. And they really want to take over. And there are not many movies that are heart based. No, there's not. No, there's not. Real ones. Real ones. And if there if there is, they usually there's a sad you they'll they'll hit you with a sad point mm. in it. So you'll you'll feel it mm. and you'll feel pain there. Another thing with cin cinemas or movie theatres mm. are all uh, uh, sacred sacred geometrically set up to um, harvest energy from the people. So when you have a horror movie or uh, some of the extreme nasty movies that come out that have been coming out mm -hmm. over the last like 15 20 years mm -hmm. um, the people in there when the people when you when people shock like that the the, the movie theaters are set up perfectly sacred geometrically to, to then harvest the energy straight from mm -hmm. the people in there in the same principle mm -hmm. as any uh, mass gathering Definitely. Yeah. And that's one thing that um, most of the populace do not understand is about energy. No. And, no. and how it We're not taught about it. We're no. not taught anything to do with that. But we're actually, I mean, we're either taught um, the atheistic scientific uh, uh, point of view or the Christian point. I mean, I know there are other religions as well, but I'm just saying in general, whether it's like, there's the God. God or there's the the atheist. We're given only we're given those two, and that's it. We're not taught taught taught, taught or told anything about how uh, electromagnetic energy works. And really, you know, uh, these these this vampiric consciousness is using black magic to do what they do. And black, really, really, magic is just the manipulation of electromagnetic mm -hmm. energy with will and intent. Nothing else more than that. It's not anything mm -hmm. else. It's through ritual. Um, when you do a ritual, you then tag and you connect into the morphogenetic field of every other time anybody else has done that ritual before. Mm -hmm. So, the other, so, so then that ritual is extremely powerful and extremely important to them. Um, they're obsessive with that. So, the, so, so you know, they base they they they're based solely on like the reptilian brain. We all have the reptilian brain. They primarily work through that, and that is uh, um, uh, 
uh, obsession and compulsion, mm -hmm. and um, um, seek and destroy, and conquer, and um, like all the primal work. But it's also it's pure very intellect, as well. totally and utterly, and mm -hmm. it's competitive with with the with the way that if you lose, then you you know you die basically. Mm -hmm. Like the weak, they have no time for the weak. The weak will be taken out. They don't like so, so, uh, that. That that consciousness doesn't. If they have a child that is uh, um, disabled or weak, they they push it to the side and get rid of it, or they'll kill it. They don't. They're not interested. Mm -hmm. They're only interested in in the strong mm -hmm. uh, will. Strong will. Strong survive. Um, it's which is like the opposite to what humanity is. Humanity. The, the human heart. Has compassion and cares about um, what what the weaker or, or the disabled or, or that and, and 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 wants to make sure that they're protected and safe. So what they've managed to do, very calculatedly, calculatedly is the word, um, is put two completely opposing consciousnesses, consciousnesses into one body. So, so the human, the, the human, the, the the mammalian, which is which cares for its young and feeds its young, and then the reptilian, which discards and does it and pushes it away and put it into one body, and that so human beings in and of themselves are um, at odds with each other, at, at odds with themselves mm. as soon as they're born. So in a battle. Yes, all the time with all of us. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't fit those two those two consciousness streams don't fit together. Um, so listening to oneself, yeah. turning off the noise, you know, even if it's for half an hour each yes. day, and, oh, yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah, and allowing yeah. to understand and, and hear that inner voice, that yeah. inner knowingness, yeah, yeah. Is, is vital. Definitely. Because that brings back to a, a neutral and a balance within ourselves and a connection to our true self as well. Yeah, who you truly are, exactly. Yeah. And, um, uh, going back to the heart again, and I've been writing about that more more recently because, um, like the final, that is the final push. Like the the great work of ages is what is which has been going on for um, probably more than twenty thousand years. Really, I mean, our, the history that we're told is completely incorrect in every way. I mean, even down to like with the cavemen. And uh, that it's just this is not correct history, but um, so the great work was to uh, it's to conquer the human heart, the human being can't be done overnight. Mm. It take it takes a long time of calculated planning to do it over, and they these these people um, they they start a project that they know that won't be finished in their lifetime. Because they know that they know the bigger picture, mm -hmm. and they know that they're working towards a, a grander plan, and the grand plan is to have a complete control of the human heart, and then the capstone can be placed on yes. top. And the thing is with humans as well. One of the beautiful endearing qualities I love about humans, yeah. which um, since this, since the modern era has come along with technology. Yeah. And video games, mm. compassion and empathy yeah. is something that humanity has been losing really fast. Yeah. And yes. I found and that really disturbing yeah. because that is an endearing part of being human. Absolutely, yeah, no, definitely with video games, and there's no doubt about that. That that um, well, they use especially like the Grand Theft Auto games. I don't know, like people definitely will know what they are. Um, it allows you to go and be. Brutal, as brutal as you like, on a, on a, on a very sort of realistic scene. You can go and, and 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 attack just anybody on the street, and you can drive and you can run people over, and so it sort of t starts to slowly erode the natural empathy mm -hmm. that human beings have. That's just one of the angles that they're having to get rid of it. They don't want. Yes. They want to make us like them. Yes, and it's desensitizing our natural state of yeah. being. Yeah. Yes. And so, I mean, I've seen it myself where you've got somebody in the street being beaten up by somebody else and yeah. everybody walks past. No one wants to get involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'll get one brave soul that will, will yeah. step in. Yes. When 
perhaps in the 70s and early 80s Completely before different. all the technology mm -hmm. came in, mm -hmm. there would have been a lot of people that would have come to Definitely. the aid. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, and and th there's been like a heavy push in the last like decade, uh, decade and a half um, to really, because their time's running out. They don't have very much time left, excuse me, to um, put this plan into place. Mm. Um, and it's, 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 it also ties into transhumanism and, um, you know, because if they can get tech into the human being, as much tech as they can into the human being, then they can start um, taking, you know, the, separating the heart faster. Mm. Um, that's why, you know, um, there's a big push for atheism now. Mm. I, it's not none of my business what anybody believes, but there is, there is, a, there is a, there's a calculated agenda behind it. But it's still cutting us off. At yeah, two, isolation. That we're only here, and mm. this is all we are. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it, it's, it, I mean, it's reinforcing that lie, that um, birth and death, and that's it, lie. Yeah, mm. yeah. A lot of these guys don't want to die either, because then they sort of would have to face, um, face up a lot of stuff mm. that they've done. So there's, but they have technology. They have, I mean, the technology that they have, they have age regression technology. So they can do that stuff. Mm. A lot of the um, a lot of the uh, Third Reich is still continued on and still mm. continued going. A lot of the programs that uh, that the children were involved in um, and that I was connected to in the seventies and eighties, they don't do that anymore. They don't do those particular ones anymore. They can they can program somebody through um, technology mm -hmm. so they can give them the the memories to make them think that they went through those things yes. and were traumatized but they you know so, so that's good enough yes. if they think they were traumatized and they went through it and that's good enough to make them split split the mind and you know disassociate mm -hmm. the mind because it's all about disassociation yes. um, they uh, disassociation is a big key mm -hmm. to all of this you know um, because you know when you disassociate somebody they then don't know what they did, mm. and then they can, you know, that's where trigger words come in, and, um, and uh, uh, Manchurian candidate-based type mm. stuff comes in, um, and it's, it's, they learned, I, I did believe that the Zeta so the, like the, the, the almond-eyed almond greys that we call, gave particular group of human beings the information in the, uh, the more uh, more precise information because I know they've been doing disassociation because if you look at the Egyptian book of the dead it explains in that particular book how that they were they were using potions uh, or drugs uh, and trauma to disassociate back back then mm -hmm. um, but they refined it they refined it big time mm -hmm. in during the Second World War, mm. but I think that that information was given from the Zeta to them, to how to honeycomb split the mind. Yes. So, um, uh, what what the what the children went through in these particular projects? The children were picked for, for, from specific bloodlines, which is connected to Project Oak Tree, where so they were they they, they found certain mothers from certain bloodlines. Um, connected to uh, different streams because they're looking for specific DNA from specific bloodlines to traumatize. They so they found the mothers, and then the mothers for who were in, who were born in the 50s, uh, their children were born in the 70s and 80s. Those were the ones who were like the 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 original the, the they were the original ones that were that were that were shattered that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know I, I think I've explained. A little bit about it before, where um, of how and why um, you know, trauma, what and what trauma-based mind control is, and why it's used, and um, shattering the mind through through extreme trauma. What sort of techniques okay. have you been doing yourself? You know, just just something that yeah. maybe help others that are listening. Techniques to this. Um, in terms of what? In terms of self healing. Uh, self healing and and um, yeah. um, and overcoming this disassociation mm, yeah it's quite um, difficult um, you've got to have somebody you've got to, you have to have work with somebody that you really trust and you've got to find somebody that that um, will understand you 
and understand. And you've got to find somebody that really loves you because, you know, the, the, what comes along with people who've been through these projects is extreme personalities. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, addiction is directly tied mm -hmm. to um, uh, uh, all of this stuff. So you have all of these rehabs that are all, especially in the U.S., they're, they're a, mo a lot of them are, you know, re reprogram reprogramming centers because they know that they're going to magnetically draw to them mm -hmm. um, people who've been through these pro projects mm -hmm. because trauma-based mind control creates addiction. Mm -hmm. um, sexual abuse creates opiate addiction. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know that so they, they know what they're doing it's like they do it then they create they create the problem and they the solution is there but it's their solution mm -hmm. then so then they draw them to it and if somebody starts to wake up or somebody starts to realize you know what's going on they get, gather them in pull them in again and so they're reprogramming as well do some tweaking again to yeah. make sure that they you know so that because if somebody wakes up too much they're either going to make sure they're not around anymore, or maybe they'll, you know, they'll either kill them, or they'll assassinate their character, or they will make them seem as if they're completely insane, so nobody pays any attention to what they say. And we've seen some of that with some of the Hollywood stars. Though. What? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of them. Lots of them. When the programming breaks down, um, it's pretty intense, you know, because it it, it will throw you into a. Uh, a spin like nothing else, mm -hmm. like you've literally, you know, you've lost your mind, mm -hmm. and that's happened to um, uh, quite a few Hollywoods. I mean, Britney Spears is a good example, yes. actually. Yes. Fact, the, interestingly enough, like the name Spears, there's a, connect, there's a, there's a, her birthday as well is uh, twelve two, and um, yeah, so it's, there's the two two connection as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, her breakdown was interesting. I mean, not in, mm -hmm. in, in, a, in, a, in a, if you're looking at it as a study, yes. as a study guide, you know. Um, uh, yeah. Is there anything that you would like to say to the listeners um, about your hopes for humanity? Yeah. Okay. I, I believe, and I truly believe this. I, I believe that the war is already finished. I believe that we already overcame it and already it's done already. The majority of the work has been done um, by the volunteer consciousness that has come down here to help waken everybody up. The majority of the work has been done. So now we're just playing it out. The storyline is being played out and we're watching and it is a story. It is a storyline. Everything that you, that you watch on the television is going on in politics is a storyline.